So the columnar epithelium are really long cells. Um, they are tall, taller than they are wide. And <clears throat> these cells, as usual, have a lumen. So this becomes the luminal or apical surface. This end becomes the basement membrane. So if you observe under the basement membrane, there's always another tissue. It's not an open, uh, it's not an open space or a lumen, right? So that's something that you want to look for. Any epithelial tissue will have an underlying connective tissue um, that attaches the epithelial tissue to the underlying structures. So no matter which lining in your body you're looking at, they'll always be lined with an epithelium, some type of epithelium. So <clears throat> these columnar epithelial cells have the nucleus slightly towards the basement membrane. So the first type of um, columnar epithelium that we're going to look at is simple columnar epithelium. We did see microvilli or brush borders. So no matter which part of your body you're looking at, if you see um, a lot of absorption going on, for example, in your small intestine and um, the tubules of the kidney, you will find these structures known as microvilli. Microvilli is also known as brush border. So brush border increases the surface area for absorption of substances. Okay, so a special feature of some of the columnar epithelial cells is the presence of these goblet-like structures known as goblet cells. Okay, so these are the goblet cells. So all these hollow structures are known as goblet cells. If you observe the goblet cells, their mouth is open towards the lumen because they secrete mucus towards the lumen. So you find goblet cells in parts of the body um, where you need a lot of mucus, like or you find a lot of mucus, like the upper respiratory tract and the large intestine. Um, you find goblet cells. Um, <clears throat> you also find a lot of goblet cells in the female reproductive uh, tract as well. Okay, so goblet cells produce mucus and obviously you will need mucus towards the lumen of the uh, structure because goblet cells function in protecting the underlying organs. They also help in trapping dust and debris in the uh, upper respiratory tract, right? And in regions like the intestine, they form a good layer of protection because the food is constant, constantly churned. So the mucus basically acts like a good lubricant. Not only that, but it also protects the um, underlying, underlying organ from abrasion. Okay, so these are the goblet cells. This becomes the lumen of the jejunum. Jejunum is the um, is a part of the small intestine. Okay, and there you see the nucleus of the epithelial cell. This one over here becomes the nucleus of the goblet cell. Okay, so look for the goblet cell, and when you're looking at a goblet cell, it's going to be in a columnar epithelial tissue, and Wherever the mouth of the goblet cell is open, that's going to be the lumen. So if this is the lumen, this becomes the apical or luminal surface. And this area in blue becomes the basement membrane. Now, the structure we are looking at is non-ciliated simple columnar epithelium. You find this a whole bunch. Now, if there is microvilli, you find them in the digestive tract. And... Um, you f also find them in the reproductive organs. You find these non ciliated structures in the eyes, the ears, and the buccal cavity, that is the oral cavity. But you find brush border in regions where you need to have a lot of absorption, that is in the digestive tract. Okay, so the next type of epithelium, well, we are going to look at is simple columnar ciliated epithelium. As the name suggests, they have cilia on the surface. So this in blue and everything in here is the cilia. Cilia serves two purposes. One, it again helps in trapping dust and debris. And the second, it 
moves it beats the stuff it moves constantly to clear the mucus or any thing on the top of the tissue you observe this type of epithelium doesn't necessarily have goblet cell but they still have cilia so not every type of columnar epithelial tissue uh, contains uh, goblet cells in them <clears throat> Um, all right, so this picture is from the, or this uh, slide is from the lumen of the uterine tube. So this hollow space is the lumen. So if you have observed again, the top of the cell always of epithelial tissue always faces an empty space or a lumen. So this is the lumen. This becomes a luminal surface and this region becomes the basement membrane of the cell. Now you find ciliated columnar epithelium quite a bit in the upper respiratory tract as well. You also find goblet cells in the upper respiratory tract. Um, that's because the mucus is sticky and it helps in trapping dust and debris, prevents our lower respiratory tract from getting infected with anything. And the cilia on the surface beats constantly, moves constantly to clear the surface of um, the um, epithelium okay so the other region where you find it again is in the uterine tube that's where this picture is from in the uterine tube or um, fallopian tube cilia helps in propelling the egg uh, to the uterus from the uterine tube okay so Cilia mainly functions in movement and the other type of structure we looked at, that is microvilli. Over here, the microvilli help in increasing the area for absorption. Okay, the next type of columnar epithelium is pseudostratified columnar epithelium. Pseudo means false or fake. Strata means layers. Strata means layers. Um, so this epithelium suggests it appears to be multi-layered but it's really not they just look that way okay so pseudostratified columnar epithelium again you see them containing goblet cells so they produce mucus so these goblet cells produce mucus and they are found quite a bit in the trachea at the upper respiratory tract so these structures the cilia are very prominent in this picture that's the cilia Okay, and again, this is the lumen. This is the um, epical or luminal surface, and this end becomes the um, basal membrane, basement membrane of the epithelium. Okay, so if you look at your handout over here, um, this over here is <clears throat> columnar epithelium, and in here, the goblet cells containing mucus is stained really really dark so this becomes a lumen this becomes a basement membrane in this picture you see simple columnar epithelium with goblet cells um, and oh sorry simple columnar epithelium with goblet cells and microvilli on the surface okay and here you see pseudostratified columnar epithelium you find a whole bunch of pseudostratified columnar epithelium in the trachea and the upper respiratory tract okay so again don't forget that if you forget about um, where you can find the tissue you can always click this information right over here and it tells you the location of the pseudostratified columnar epithelium okay so the next type of tissue we want to look at is, um, sorry, mm. stratified squamous epithelium. Strata means layers. Squamous means squished cells. And epithelium is because they have all the characteristics of the epithelial tissue. These cells are keratinized because they contain keratinocytes. Right, so they contain a whole bunch of keratinocytes. Um, keratinocytes produce keratin. So you find stratified squamous epithelium in regions where you need 
a lot of keratinized protection and keratin is non-absorbent right think of the parts of your body where you can just wipe off and you know feel dry your skin uh, hair all these contain keratin so stratified squamous epithelium is present on the epidermis of the skin and this top layer is called the stratum corneum stratum corneum other types of cells that are present in stratified squamous keratinized epithelium are melanocytes that produce melanin Merkel discs that are sensory structures and Langerhans cells that are cells of the immune system. Okay, and all of these cells are present in a region known as stratum basale, which is this basal layer. This is a layer that's constantly dividing, and as we scuff off the top layer, the you know uh, uh, the top layer is a layer of dead cells, dead corny layer. So the next layer becomes the underlying layer becomes a layer of dead cells to provide a layer of protection. So if you look at ANP reveal, this picture is uh, probably from the foot because the it has a very, very thick layer of stratum corneum, right? So this is stratum corneum. Stratum basale is the uh, actively dividing basal layer. When we scuff off a layer of dead cell, um, we produce more cells that come to the top and die off to provide a thick layer of protection okay so the live cells go up and die and become stratum corneum okay so where do you find this you find this in the epidermis of the skin the epidermis that is the outermost layer of the skin so outermost parts of your body you find stratified squamous keratinized epithelium the next type of epithelium is stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium. As the name suggests, this is non-keratinized. So, you, it, this, these type of epithelial tissue are present in structures that are highly moisturized, but at the same time need a significant amount of protection. For example, when you uh, gulp a, a Dorito and scuff off um, uh, skin in your oral cavity you're well protected because of this thick layer of stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium there are no keratinocytes so they're not water resistant or non-absorbent right so a peculiar characteristic of this epithelium is that the topmost layer still has quite a bit live cells okay and this whole layer is considered the layer of stratified squamous epithelium. Where do you find this epithelium? We find this in the oral cavity, oropharynx, because we eat, we it, it we scuff off uh, the outermost layer when we eat something too rough or hard. And esophagus, when we gulp food, we have this in the anus, the uterine, cervix, vagina, urethra in male and female as well. Okay, so all of these parts of the body, if you think of it, it needs it undergoes a lot of fr friction and abrasion, so need to be well protected. But at the same time, they are moist. Okay, and that's why, uh, and that's because these cells are non-keratinized. Okay, what happened to the stop?